Good morning, wherever you are. My name is Apostle Father Emmanuel Okan from Ghana. This morning I come to you with the word of God. Iron sharpens iron. As every day we come here in the morning and in the evening to share the word of God. Welcome to the program, Epicazo Power Hour, episode 19. Believers, let's pray. Father, we thank you, we bless your name. Indeed, we say you are God. Father, we are here to share the word and to listen to the word. Through your word, let us be blessed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. Father Emmanuel is here. And this morning, I'm here to share a beautiful message with you. If you turn your Bible to one of the books written by King Solomon, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Praise the Lord. Believers, we have to understand that we need good friends or you need good friends and you need to be a good friend. Iron can sharpen iron and a good friend can sharpen a friend. So the iron of a fire can make the blade sharper and a good friend can make his friend better are you a good friend do you have good friends that is the question a knife is not sharpened by clothes a knife is not sharpened by bread a knife is not sharpened by stone a knife is not sharpened by plastic or even gold a knife may cut and sharp and 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 shape these things for them to be more useful but these things will only make cut and shape things not by using bread cloth plastic or even gold eh? It is something that sharpens the knife. That to, 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 to shape. Do you understand? Welcome on the Facebook Live and Rita Weather Ben. God bless you for joining the live. Can they like and share? You see? So sharpening a knife requires iron or a substitute for iron at least. As, as a hard as the knife. So once sharpened, a knife is much more productive with less effort on such things. Because if you read Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says something there. And I want us to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. Let's hear what the Bible says that. If the axe is dull and the man does not wet the edge, 
he must put forth more strength. But wisdom helps him to succeed. So, and with this topic, you need something to sharpen the, the, um, the knife so that when you are applying it, you will not use effort. But when the edge is dull, then you need to what? Apply what? Force and strength. This proverb, chapter 27, verse 17, this proverbs chapter 17 chapter 27 verse 7 jesus hold on just a minute people say they can't see my video let me I believe you can see now. So this proverb is about good friends. Proverb 27, 17. It's about good friends. And they will make you better. So a good friend will make you brighter, sharper, and more useful. But not any friend will do. Only wise friends make you wiser. So good men love other good men. Stacy, you are welcome. And foolish friends will dull and corrupt your life. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, the Bible says that he who walks as a companion with wise men is wise. But he who associates with self-confidence, fool, is a fully is the fool himself and shall smart for it. So in first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, also says that do not be deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associate, association, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. If your father had or has a noble and a wise friend. It is wise for you to keep him as a friend. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10, the Bible says that your own friend and your father's friend forsake them not, neither go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near in spirit than a brother who is far off in, in in the heart so two are better than one solomon taught this in this or in his great book of philosophy in ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 because they sharpened and improved each other in at least four ways Listen, believers, they can share a success of labor together, help each other up when they fall, combine complementary abilities of greater accomplishment, and defend against mutual enemies. So a good friend is a great blessing. The solitary life is foolish and sacrifice these great advantages. When you talk of countenance, according to the scripture in Proverbs 25, 17, the noun countenance here may mean a person's face and appearance. So in Proverbs 25, verse 23, the Bible says that the north wind brings forth rain, so does the backbiting tongue bring forth an angry countenance. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Bible says that, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not his countenance, or not the head of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not 
as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. In First Samuel chapter 6, verse 12 says that, And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of beautiful countenance and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. So it may seem, or it means that countenance in, in this proverb means that the expression of feeling toward one person. This morning, I'm asking you a question. What is your expression of feelings towards someone? By sharpening the face of the person. Your, 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 your face, your countenance to, to your friend or to someone that you have met new. Hmm? In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15, it says that, In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as the cloud bringing the spring rain. In Acts chapter 2, verse 28, the Bible says that, And it may mean the spirit, the minor behavior or conduct of a man. So what is the spirit, the minor, and the conduct of a man? It is his character. So the Proverbs deals with the character of a man. A very precious thing in, indeed. Character is by far the most important measures of a man or woman. So limiting countenance to improving a man's facial expression mocks Solomon's wisdom. A file does not merely make a, a, a knife look better. It makes the knife better in its usefulness. Hallelujah. So limiting countenance to showing feelings make little sense. For friends already express approval of each other. We have what we call Lona. Lona or Lonex. Lona is a person that prefers not to associate with others. Lona. That prefers not to associate with others. So Lonex never amount to to, to, to very much for, 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 for because of that they, they can't grow they are like a knife that cannot sharpen itself they become dull and rusty with ignorance with a poor habit and depressed spirit loaders are always the weakest members of any group for they continue to rust and decay without the sharpening steel of noble friends. So the Proverbs wisdom cannot be overthrown. Loneliness with life. Their lives are waste. They never sharpen anyone. They, 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 they feel at their funerals or at their funeral are they only out of duty. They feel no, no, no real loss because the loner in the coffin never did anything to improve their lives when he or she was alive. And as I explained earlier on, I said loner is a person that prefers not to associate with others. This is a wasted life. And it is in, it, it is in direct volition of God's command to love others. Because in Mark chapter 12, verse 31, the Bible says that the second is like this and is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 to 14, the Bible says that for you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an insensitive to your flesh, 
and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness but throughout love you should serve one another believers listeners for the whole law concerning human relationships is complied with in the one precept you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself i was talking about lona someone who love to i mean not associate his or herself to anyone let loners spend more time with good men and they could be sharpened into useful men but lazy habit of self indulgence are hard to break selfishness laziness and pride keep a man from seeking friends is happy resting by himself listen and listen carefully foolishness ignorance and bad habit hinder a man from keeping friends for he drives them away my name is apostle father Emmanuel okai we are teaching please like this video and share it and i I appreciate your time. I respect you. You always make time with the Lord when I'm here. So please kindly pay attention, share it, share the life, and comment as well. If you read Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, the Bible says that the man of many friends, a friend of all the world, the man of many friends, of a friend of the world, will prove himself a bad friend but there is a friend who stick closer than a brother there is a friend who stick closer than a brother so successful athletic training requires competition or training with those better than you otherwise your skills are never tested you will never learn the best techniques. Your maximum effort is not called into action. And you deceive yourself regarding your ability. So being a loner and limiting your friend is like preparing, like preparing I mean, a, a, a football pack or a soccer pack eh? or a soccer pitch by playing tennis on a computer so such a choice is guaranteed to result in future but god declared in 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 garden of eden that mankind is social now the law said it is not good sufficient and satisfactory that the man should be alone i will make him a helper, suitable, adapted, complimentary for him. You understand? So a wife and children provide valuable society, but they are not enough. Rarely do wives sharpen a man like other good men, for that is trying to sharpen iron with a weaker Better. So in First Peter chapter three verse seven, the Bible says that in the same way you you married men, in the same way you married men should live considerately with your wives, with an intelligent recognition of the married relation, honoring the wife, honoring the woman as physical the weaker you understand so but not realizing that you are joint heirs of grace God's unmerited favor of life in order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off otherwise you cannot pray effectively so women women may be sharpened by men 
and intend sharpening one another. But seldom do they provide the collision of equal or superior metals that result in a bright, shiny, sharp edge on a man. So David described the love of Jonathan as exceeding that of woman top. Married at the time to that very wise girl, and that is Abigail. So in Samuel, first Samuel chapter 25, the Bible says that first Samuel chapter 20, verse 3, the Bible says that the man's name was Nabal and his wife's name was Abigail. She was a good woman, a woman of good relation and when relationship and with understanding and beautiful with the husband but the man was rough and evil in his doing he was a calibite and somewhere chapter uh, second somewhere chapter one verse 26 says that i am distressed for you my brother jonathan very pleasant have you been to me your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Listen to what David said. Wow. The love of Jonathan to David was more pleasant and wonderful than the love of, of woman. So Jonathan sharpened David by strengthening his hand in the Lord with spiritual provoking and covenant promises. Of loyalty and service a woman could not and would not make. So in first Samuel chapter 23, verse 16, the Bible says that and Jonathan saw Sam rose, went in the wood to David at Horesh, and strengthened his hand in God. So those two great friends together sharpened each other formed one powerful team for God's glory. Today, are we seeing this kind of thing? A man of God who sharpens his own man of God today. In today, this presentation, everyone is trying to find his or a way, but it wasn't so in the days. And that's what the Bible is saying. Jonathan's 20th David in the Lord. How how much how, how about you? How much do you strengthen your, your colleague, a pastor, a man of God, woman of God? People normally quote this quote: iron sharp is iron. Iron sharp is iron. But the, the, the real interpretation. Is what not they are getting it. They are not catching the glimpse of Proverbs chapter 27, verse 70. They are doing things on their own that feels that they are they will be okay, but that's not what the scripture is saying. So Job also was the kind of sharpening influence among his companions. Because in Job chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, the Bible says that behold, you have instructed, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands your ways have held firm him who was falling and you have strengthened the feeble knees believers the brethren also from Rome chapter even the great apostle Paul and the Christian that is a brethren there having had news of us come as far from forum of Apius and the three tyrants to meet us. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and received new courage, for there is mutual comfort in believing brethren. Believers, what are you into to strengthen your colleagues? Or to discourage them. For in Romans chapter 1, verse 12 says that that is that we may be mutually strengthened and encouraged 
and comfort by each other's feet, both yours and mine. In Romans chapter 15, verse 24, the Bible says that I hope to see you in passing through Rome as I go on my intended trip to Spain and to be headed on my journey there by you after I've enjoyed your company for a little while. So Paul is talking. He also talked to, he wrote a letter to um, um, Timothy. And Paul really loved Timothy. And for this effect, he was always thankful for the fellowship of the saints at Philippi. And our Lord sent teachers out two by two. Now after this, the Lord chose and appointed 70 apostles and sent them out ahead of him, two by two, into every town and places where he himself was about to come. Blessings. God bless you. Laura, Laura Dennis Robinson, God bless you for watching the life. You are welcome. We are on the topic, iron sharp is iron. So, Jesus had the tongue of, of the land and he knew how to speak a word in session to those who, who he did it. Do you understand? So, we of today, sharpen iron sharpens iron, we need to put effort in that. Hmm? Church members are to bear one another's bedding and convert one from error, which is the sharpening purpose of the church. It is for this reason that Paul warned about those forsaking assemblies. You see, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. So the first church, under the Holy Spirit, powerful influence and showed great zeal towards their fellowship and society of saints. Look at the close um, relationship of the members and be convicted to make greater effort to this goal yourself. This church is perfecting one another. If not, why not? If not, what will you do? There are two um, direct and important lessons here that I wanted to know. Number one, you need number one, you need noble and godly friends to maximize your growth. And you need to be such a friend to others to maximize this as well. Rather than worry why others do not do more or um, why they do what they, 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 they want to do towards you. Choose instead to be a sharpening influence in the lives of others and to charitably look for the best intentions and the and the desired effect of what they do to you are, are you here with me are you here with me so that's what we need to do if the proverb is true if proverb um, chapter 27 verse 70 is true there is implied lesson you should not overlook if good friends improve a person's character a wise husband will help his wife have time with good friends to be a better wife this is nourishing his wife a wife or a wise wife will do the same knowing a husband will be a better for being with good men a parent will be pro, um, proactive to promote friendship for their children with other wise and noble children. As a fowl takes small shavings from the knife blade to make it better, 
so true friends will sometimes correct, instruct, rebook, or warn you. Are you willing to take their criticisms to be better? David said he counted it a kindness when the righteous would hit him. Psalm 141, stanza 5. As beautiful and wise Abigail did when she was too angry. Do you understand? Solomon declared the wounds of a friend better than the kiss of an enemy. Believers, do you diligently fulfill your rule to improve others' life? Are you sharpening influence to make them more useful and productive? Do you value and promote relationships with others' good men for your own perfection, even if their corrections and exhortation at times might hurt or stink? Let the righteous and the wise in the earth be helpful eh? companions for their mutual perfection. I bring my message to an end. In Psalm six and uh, Psalm sixteen three says that, as for the godly, that is the saint who are in the land, they are the excellent, the noble, and the glorious. In in whom is all my delight. Believers, iron sharpens iron. Let your sharpening influence bring productivity in the life of people. Iron sharpen iron. Let your sharpening influence help people to reach their goals in charitably way, in giving way, encouraging way, in prayers. The burden of your friend is your, is your burden. And we are all at responsibility to do so. What are you doing to sharpen the iron of your friend? For your for the for, for your countenance should be should appear on his face or her face. And it is a big task for us of today. Today, Christians don't do that. They are always um, self-centered, self-centered, personal interest. Eh? They want to have everything to themselves but not allowing their friends to have, and to, to, to have that. Mingle with good friends. Mingle with good friends. And you get good things. Bad company corrupts good morals. Who is your friend? That you know that this friend can be helpful to you in time of your burden, in time of your trouble, in time of your problem. There are some friends that we we so call them friends, so called girlfriends, so called boyfriends. But in time of trouble, you will never see them. In time of your calamity and your trust and temptations, you will not see them. They wait till it is over. It is over. And there are some friends. They are there for you. Rainfall, war, earthquake any day. What kind of friend do you have? And what kind of friend are you expecting to sharpen your iron? Iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 27, 17. But let the countenance speaks in both life. David was being encouraged in the Lord by Jonathan. Who are you encouraging? Who are you helping? Who are you assisting? When Joshua was at the war front, Moses went and lifted up his hand. The Bible says that his hand became weary, and Aaron and O lifted the hands of Moses, and they were able to conquer their enemies. Whose hand are you lifting up? Are you lifting your own up, your own hands up? God is not happy about it. Lift up the hands of any man of God that you think. You can help. Anyone that you come close to him, 
help him and let him reach top. Someone also will help you in his channels. You connect, I connect, we connect. That is what God is looking for. God bless you and God keep you. Welcome to the program and thank you for joining the program, Epicaizo Power Hour, episode 19, with the topic, Iron Sharpens Iron. My name is Apostle Father Imano Okan. God bless you and good morning to you all. Enjoy your day and remember, Jesus Christ is coming. Be faithful and stay in your faith. If you want to support the ministry, if you want to support the man of God, if I've been blessed with this message, these teachings, you can sow a seed on your own generously. Get my cash app by contacting me on my Facebook Messenger or my WhatsApp number. I have the WhatsApp number on my video um, description and I'll respond to you. If you need any prayers, counseling or any advice in your marriage concerning your destiny, if you want to know what God is saying about your destiny, we work on that also. So see you another day in the night, in the evening. Yesterday night, we had a beautiful topic, the prophetic act. And I spoke a lot. Tonight, I will continue with the part two. And we have directions to do. God bless you and God keep you. Have faith in the Lord. Believe in God and you shall be established. Believe in the prophet and you shall prosper. Peace. Shalom.